If you are starting off to invest in the stock market, one of the most common terms that you hear people talk about will be the blue chip stocks. Now, people who say that you can start investing in blue chip stocks, it is safe, stable, and yes, regular dividend. But when you open your stock trading account, you won't see any stocks being labeled there, blue chip stocks, right? So what the f is blue chip stocks and where can you find them? So join me in this series to learn about blue chip stocks investing. Woo! Hi, welcome back to Mr. Money TV, your financial edutainment channel. Bringing you financial education and fun at the same time. Now, who say that learning about money can't be fun? If you enjoy learning about money in a fun way, do subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification to get updated with our latest video. Also, for those of you who are more active on Facebook or Instagram, we do have a Facebook page and Instagram page as well. So do follow us there. Well, it's been one heck of a roller coaster journey for the world in the past two months. The market crash, interest rate reduction, and lockdown. Down. The world is going crazier day by day. While all these are happening, many people are starting to see an opportunity to start investing in the stock market. As the GOAT Warren Buffett says, when people are greedy, be fearful. And when people are fearful, be greedy. So many started to ask about how to invest in stock market, hoping that they can find some good bargains and even earn some better returns from their money in this time. Now in this series, we will take you on a journey about blue chip stocks investing in Malaysia. Malaysia. But before we begin, if you like what you're watching so far, help us by smashing the like button and share our video because that would really help us with the YouTube algorithm to reach more people with our content. Now, thanks in advance. So let's start with some quick basics of what is stock investing. Well, when you buy a stock of a company on the stock market, you're actually becoming an owner of the company. In other words, when you buy the stocks of Nestle, you become an owner of Nestle. If you buy the stocks of Public Bank, you're an owner of public bank. So when the business of the company is making a profit, it is a common practice that they will share out a portion of this profit with the company's owner, which are the shareholders, through what we call a dividend payout. Well, in my life, I've known quite many people who are currently retired, living off dividend income from the stocks that they own. They've certainly made prudent decision in investing in good companies when they were much younger. So essentially, when you invest in a stock, you are investing in a business. So when the business is profitable, Profitable, you get a share of that profit. Well, in 1923, when Oliver Jing Jing Jingol, yeah, I, I think that's how we pronounce his name. Anyway, he's an employee of Dow Jones. He observed that certain stocks were trading at 200 bucks or more per share. Now, he observed that generally the market value these stocks at a much higher value than their peers. So, he used the term blue chip to describe them. Since in the game of poker, traditionally, the blue chips are the one that holds the highest value. Now, as days evolve, today, blue chip stocks in the market doesn't necessarily have a very high price. But blue chip stocks today is used to describe companies that are high quality and withstand the test of time. While there's no limit to what industry or business a blue chip stock must come from, there are a few criteria a blue chip stock must meet to be considered a blue chip. First, a blue chip stock must be in operation for a long time, typically a few decades. It can't be a company that has just started over the last few years because a blue chip stock would need to build their brand reputation and their business model over the years as one that can weather through the ups and downs of the stock market. And over long term, they have proved themselves to be a profitable business and can grow even during economic challenges. For an example, Public Bank was listed on Busan Malaysia since 1967. That's 53 years. Second, large market capitalization. Market capitalization basically means how much is the total value of the company based on the price of a stock that is traded on the stock exchange and the total number of shares outstanding. Generally, a blue chip stock in Malaysia would have at least 10 billion in market capitalization. That is a large market capitalization. Thirdly, blue chip stocks usually are the leaders in their industry. Although they may not be the number one best selling product, but they usually are in the top three sellers. For example, Nestle products is one of the leading food producers in Malaysia. You can see Nestle products everywhere. Now think about it, when's the last time you cooked yourself a Maggi Mee or made yourself a Nescafe? Fourthly, they need to have long and consistent dividend distribution over the years. This is by far one of the most attractive characteristics of a blue chip stock, which makes investors' eyes sparkle. What?
After all, receiving dividends from the stock that you invested is like realizing profit from your investment without needing to sell any of the shares. Well, like I say, I've seen many retirees who are currently living off dividends that they receive from the stocks that they invested. And traditionally, a blue chip stocks would be able to give its stockholder consistent dividend return over the long years. Fifth and finally, they are usually listed on the major index of an exchange. An index is basically a benchmark of the stock exchange. It typically takes a bunch of largest companies that are good enough to represent the average movement of the stock exchange as a whole. And in this case in Malaysia, our index is called the KLCI, Kuala Lumpur Composite Index. It is made out of the 30 largest companies listed on Bursa Malaysia. And these companies are usually considered the blue chip stocks of Malaysia. For example, Nestle, Public Bank, Maybank, RHB, PPB, and many others. So these are the five characteristics of blue chip stocks. In short, these companies have long proven track record, large market capitalization, and they are usually the industry leaders with long and consistent dividend distribution history. And they are usually listed in the composite index. Investing in blue chip stock has been one of the easiest approach to start investing in individual stocks in the stock market. As these companies are usually widely accepted by public that they are financially sound and has a proven business model giving an image that they are stable and strong as a company, therefore less volatile. On top of that, the ability of blue chip stocks to consistently pay dividend to its shareholder has often captured the attention of the public by giving them a dream that they can one day live off dividend at their retirement age. Well, most of the blue chip stocks in Malaysia are listed in the KL Composite Index. It represents the 30 largest companies in Malaysia based on their market capitalization. And among these 30 companies, there are those who are from energy energy sector, finance sector, conglomerates, healthcare, food and so on. Continuing this series, we will continue to learn about how to invest in stocks by giving an overview of these blue chip stocks that are listed in Malaysia according to their sector. So we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like what you are seeing, don't forget to like our video and turn on the notification to get notified when we upload our next video where we will start by introducing you to the blue chip stocks company in Malaysia according to its sector. See you next time.